Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Simon Waterer. I'm a customer engineer at Sourcegraph. And today I'd like to spend a few moments giving you my or perhaps Sourcegraph's perspective in terms of how we can improve developer efficiency by helping people uh, understand your code base uh, more effectively. So in terms of um, preparing for this talk, I... Um, I was thinking about, uh, you know, I've been in sort of software development technology for, for some time. Um, I was sort of thinking about the sort of the, I suppose, the big changes over the last, well, 10 years, probably more than 10 years uh, that have occurred and, and, and how they're relevant to uh, software development and, and how we actually deliver, deliver software applications and, and how we can actually accelerate that process. So there, here's my list of five. Your, your, your list may be different. So, you know, open source software. You know, when I when I started in software development, essentially, you know, the APIs, the libraries you had available to you were essentially the ones that shipped with the you know with the operating system or came with the development tool or platform you'd you'd invested in. Um, now we have libraries from obviously front end. We're at a, a React conference, of course, uh, to back end in terms of providing databases, uh, search tools, uh, you know many, many libraries, and perhaps the, the, the challenges in terms of deciding what library or framework you, you, you wish to use. Um, and of course, there have been big changes in terms of how people go about building building out software applications. Um, so we've sort of gone away from sort of the kind of big bang approach of sort of the kind of waterfall type of methodologies where we, you know, we, we capture our requirements, uh, you know, that which takes some time, you know, I, I, I worked for, for some time for a uh, a, a research company. We did a lot of work for so large government organisations. We we suspend have, have huge sort of requirement documents that we had to either read or prepare. So we've moved to a more sort of iterative approach. We'll be sort of have smaller chunks in terms of uh, in, in terms of the, the capabilities we want to deliver, and that's great uh, because it allows us to essentially shrink that loop between uh, building and delivering applications or capabilities additional functions and getting feedback from our you know stakeholders or clients customers so a, a much more sort of iterative uh, fast based approach so essentially you know allows us to actually correct uh, direction uh, much earlier in terms of the the the, the, the life cycle of, of a particular application or, or solution and of course you know uh, you know the, the move to cloud where we're you know Again, from a software perspective, you no longer have to worry about getting a hold of infrastructure or networking at a sort of kind of a base level, where you can actually uh, go out and, and get someone to deliver you a database service or provide middleware on demand without having to actually worry about how to configure or deploy or manage it. Um, uh, and, and obviously, then in terms of again, that's that's providing additional building blocks and building blocks, excuse me, in terms of actually. Um, building and delivering soft software solutions. Um, and, you know, I perhaps sort of actually say there's a parallel between sort of cloud computing in some sense uh, and open source software. Again, they're kind of fundamentally about sort of providing additional building blocks in terms of to, 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 to allow software developers to sort of focus on their, their business problems, their business functions and capabilities that, that actually they're where they can really add, add value uh, to, to their customers. Uh, and the last two in terms of continuous integration delivery, and very sort of a, a, aligned to sort of agile development. Again, the focus is in terms of um, testing, or you've kind of frequently uh, delivering software uh, or de delivering and de deploying software much more rapidly. Again, shrinking that loop, um, but also enabling us to actually test on with smaller changes, getting additional feedback more, more quickly. Um, ideally, when you do run into problems, that sort of set of, of, of changes that you perhaps have to evaluate in terms of finding the root cause it, 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 it is, is smaller. And it was finally in terms of service-based architecture. So we've got a sort of big change in terms of changes in terms of how we actually build software from an architectural standpoint. So from sort of client server to three tier to these sort of, sort of multi-service uh, type of applications. And again, where the goal is to um, improve or increase encapsulation uh, and decouple application from application logic um, so again making it much easier potentially to 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 make changes with it within our code because you're you're sort of your changes have less impact or or, or limited impact on on other other services etc uh, because 
you're sort of sitting behind uh, some sort of service-based API. And that's, that's relevant in terms of front-end applications as well, where there's sort of a perhaps a move to sort of allow people to create um, sort of micro front-end front -end applications again, where we, we have a, a set of composable application components, which we can sort of stitch together kind of very, very easily. So I'd say, you know, obviously all of these changes, initiatives, uh, obviously have had, uh, had a sort of an impact in terms of um, how fast, how quickly we can actually uh, develop software. But if we actually sort of think about the software development life cycle, it's not sort of one big loop. M many people sort of tend to think of it as essentially uh, an outer loop and an inner loop. So the outer loop is essentially, um, you know, the, the releases, the projects, the uh, the sprints that we're actually undertaking. So it's more of a sort of a, a kind of a, a team effort in some sense. And I'd probably argue that in terms of the five, uh, five changes we had above is um, whilst they definitely actually improve that sort of development life cycle, they're more focused on, on that out, outer loop. Certainly in terms of you think about agile development, continuous delivery, uh, I mean, that's their sort of square in terms of trying to improve the, uh, the efficiency of, of that outer loop. But they, they, they have benefits in terms of that inner loop, and the inner loop is really around um, what you're doing as an individual developer. So, you know, okay, I have to I have to make some change to, I have to add a new capability. I have to fix some problem that appeared within our sort of uh, uh, test suite. There's an incident and I have to investigate that or I'm trying to sort of remove some form of sort of technical debt within a, 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 an application or, or set of services. Um, so that's really the focus in terms of the actual sort of ind individual developers when you actually get to that sort of, you know, you're actually writing the code, you're actually closer to the source of the code. And of course, what we all want to do is basically sort of ensure that you know we're as quick, we're as efficient as we can within within that inner loop. You know, once we have a great understanding in terms of the task ahead of us, once we have sort of kind of full context, we can really sort of you know we we understand understand the tech stack that we're perhaps dealing with at that point in time. We can be kind of kind of very efficient, very productive. So you know we we know exactly what we're doing. We can get away. We're in front of our ID, and we can actually you know be write our code, test it, iterate. Uh, and do it in a sort of a kind of a, a very efficient manner. Obviously, there are challenges in terms of, uh, and, and I suppose the, the key challenges people face is essentially, you know, interruptions in terms of that, in terms of that flow, uh, where you have to sort of switch context. So, obviously, you know, most organisations have you. We have sort of planned interruptions where we have, you know, we have meetings in terms of to uh, up, update people on pro on progress. Um, but we may have interruptions in terms of people asking us questions, other members of our team asking us questions, and of course. You know, there may be things we don't understand. You know, we 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 don't have full context. We don't have full understanding, and we have to then go away and actually try and try and sort of fill in the gaps in with it, with our knowledge in in order to uh, achieve the task we're looking at. And and really, it's in terms of you know how can we actually minimise those interruptions so everybody sort of has context and sort of has that sort of kind of you know kind of fast flow in terms of how they're writing software. So uh, you know, uh, it's a, one of it's a, 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 a cartoon that one of my colleagues. Um, uh, pointed me out um so in terms of in terms of actually how we think about how we how we write software uh in terms of sort of another sort of uh, talking about that that inner flow so you know obviously when we're writing software we, we have some sort of blue blue sky thinking you know we're thinking about how best to write this much method what this class is going to look like how can you encapsulate how can you make it make our code easy, easier to read easier to change for example um and, and that's that's great, but the reality is often actually we spend a lot of our time actually trying to under, actually trying to under, understand what before we can actually actually be productive. And obviously, that might be really basic stuff like trying to understand uh, something about the language or te text stack you're 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 involved in. Um, I mean, I can remember what kind of fairly early on in my career a real challenge. You know, one of probably my most stressful time I had was actually working on an options trading system. Um, it wasn't core part of our business. But every now and then I would be shipped off to a basement in Zurich or Frankfurt and I'd have to sit there uh, on a Sunday trying to fix this trading system that had you know, suffered some sort of failure and I had to get it working by, 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 uh, by Monday. And the code itself was relatively complex, but actually the changes I had to make were very, very simple. But I could only make those very simple changes once I had a full understanding in terms of what was causing this problem. So, you know, I spent my time trying to sort of understand the, 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 that, that, that code base so I could actually make a small change to actually get the system up and running. And that's essentially the reality for, 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 for many of us. Um, you know, we live in a, you know, we live in an age of software, essentially. Everything is driven by software in some way. Um, therefore, there's a, a huge demand to actually 
iterate and improve our, our software solutions, um, which you know leads to basically sort of the, there's obviously a lot more code out there than there used to be. Uh, we have many more developers, uh, and there's a sort of additional complexity. And in terms of if you look at the studies from people like Microsoft, this one's actually from Stack Overflow. In terms of from a development perspective, people spend 75% of their time trying to understand their code rather than actually writing the code. So again, really what we ideally want to do is actually sort of kind of cha change those metrics so we can actually get up get up and actually kind of write, write, write code more effectively. So how can we help people understand their code more, uh, more easily? Well, this is essentially from a source crop perspective, kind of essentially our goal. How can we help people get context, get understanding more quickly so they can spend more time actually writing code? Um, so you know, how, how do we do that? Well, essentially what we do is uh, we, we have a, a universal uh, search platform. And essentially what that allows our, our, our customers to do, our developers who are using this platform, is it allows them to actually search across all of their code. So all of their repos, um, re kind of regardless actually from what code host in terms of they're using for source control, but their, re their front-end repos, their back-end repos, the different services that, 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 that comprise their application. So they can actually get a better understanding of, you know, help them answer questions essentially. So, you know, how is this service implemented? How is someone using, who else is using this particular component? Um, who else is using this function or API call back to the back end? How do I use it? Um, you know, helping people actually, you know, feel, get it, get that sort of more, more complete understanding in, in terms of, uh, so they can actually sort of carry out their development, uh, uh, actually deliver actual uh, uh, application code. So I'm just going to sort of dive in to give some sort of really simple examples of how, how we might use this platform. Now, I'm not a React developer, but if I want, and so for me, what I can do with Sourcegraph, I, I can actually do some very simple queries. This system here we're looking at actually has about 2 million uh, GitHub repos indexed on it. So 2 million public GitHub and GitLab re repos. Um, I know that Formic is a, is a, is a, is a React uh, library. Uh, so I can actually just do a very, very simple query to find out where that where that occurs within my code base, I can actually maybe do a slightly more complex query to actually see um, actually ha a real query in terms of see where it's imported. So which code is actually importing that that library within my code? So in this case, we're doing a very simple regular expression query to actually show where in that code uh, that that occurs. Um, if we want to dig dig down and actually see look about so look like at specific React, React functions, again very simple queries. But again, immediately give me information about my code base in terms of where I might want to go to actually f f find information about how someone's actually using that function. And of course, from a React perspective, this is very basic. Um, but of course, at that point, it allows me to actually then dig into the code. I can actually now start to look at the other sort of symbols that are defined within this code. So essentially, now we're going from not just pure search, um, but also actually more towards sort of your actual capability you'd expect within your IDE in terms of this kind of code, code navigation. The key difference here is that we're actually doing providing sort of symbol navigation across all of your code, not just the repos that you have on your your workstation, your laptop that you're using uh, within your IDE, but code that is you know perhaps lives outside of your teams or code that you you don't need to touch very often. So again, it's it's allowing you access to that code uh, in, both in terms of search, but also in terms of in terms of code navigation. Um, and in terms of uh, in terms of React, we actually use React within within Source Graph in terms of in, in terms of our, our UI. Actually, one of the things we did uh, about a sort of six, six, well, probably like eight, eight, twelve months ago now was actually cha change actually how we use React. So we, we were actually using uh, class components rather than function components. So again, in this case, what I can actually do is sh search within again. This is across all of these sort of two million repos. Search across how we're, where we're using function components. Um, but what we do with Sourcegraph is not just provide the search, not just provide the code navigation, but also allow us to, to use search to power other capabilities. So in this particular example, we are migrating from one code pattern to another. Um, so uh, what we can also use search to do is actually show us how we're actually tracking, how we're actually monitoring that particular migration. So a code pattern migration in this case, but it may be in terms of how we're actually adhering to best practice in terms of ensuring our code has relevant metadata, or how we're migrating from one library version to another across our code base. Um, so what we can do, because we have all the code, all the commit history uh, that we, we, we can search and index, we can actually start to actually create um, time series views on that code base. So in this, in this particular case, 
um, we're showing how the, the migration from our UI in terms of from uh, from our class component to to a, to, a, to a function component. Um, so essentially, what this is giving us is basically a, a view in terms of our changing code base and allows us, if, if we're sort of responsible for that particular initiative, allows us to actually pay, perhaps make decisions. You know, is this going as fast as we want? If it's not, well, wh why is that? What actions can we take to actually change the or well, impact the rate of change uh, for for this particular initiative? Um, and finally. One of the other things we can use search for is actually to help us actually automate changes across our code base, across many, many repos. So um, uh, in this case, if we look at, uh, in this case, what we're doing is we have a, a, a script essentially, and we're essentially using that script to find out which repos we need to change, and then defining a set of steps to actually make those changes across all those code bases. So automating change across multiple repos, and then allowing us to actually monitor how those changes uh, are, uh, how those changes are progressing through the relevant uh, CI pipeline and review process. So the goal really is to allow, um, from a developer perspective, allow us to use a tool to help, help us actually uh, allow us to focus on higher value work than perhaps more basic kind of kind of code, code refactors uh, that that otherwise may not happen or may require us to actually liaise with many different teams in order to in order to get them to sort of actually uh, make those changes and then uh, you know accept and re re review those changes. So kind of a, a quick tour of the source graph platform. Um, so I, I'd just like to sort of you know thank you for your time. So again, my uh, from from a source graph perspective, you know our goal is to help improve that efficiency of that inner loop. How can we help uh, developers understand their code, get context? essentially get into flow, um, enable their, their colleagues to answer their own questions rather than coming to sort of uh, uh, kind of interrupt you uh, to ask, their, uh, ask questions about the code base. Um, love to you to actually go to sourcecraft.com to actually use uh, universal search across 2 million plus repos. That includes many, many React repos or uh, repos, or kind of all the Facebook repos, for example, uh, that, 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 are, that are public. Um, go on. Try it out. See what impact that has on, on in terms of in terms of your your own development uh, 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 kind of life cycle. Um, and I just like to say thank you very much for your time.